all right welcome back you guys um so to, so for, for this video let's just quickly talk about what i did for the ground deformation um so the idea was i just wanted to marry the all this crazy effects going on um to the environment i want I want them all to interact with the environment um just to marry things together and for the blue stuff um i didn't want the ground to be completely destroyed yet i just want some deformation and some scorched burnt up parts to be seen um so one of the reference i took was um from from this shot from avengers so we got uh, just a pretty perfect circular ring um, that uh, propagates out from the impact point and you can see all these scorched and burnt up parts of the ground so I'm just just took that as a reference uh, just just an idea to start off with and if you dive into Houdini um, so this here is just me visualizing the different parts and deformations of the ground so you can see how um, all these stuff are getting destroyed so it goes boom and then a second part which is basically just the last part where all the ground rigids get kicked up and this is what we see underground so it, it's the first part of it is pretty simple really um, it's just a grid that I've transformed to the ground that lays flat on the ground and apply some UVs because I'm using some textures in the shader um, added some normals and did subdivisions and here I'm just initializing some masks that I'll be using for the shader and this split node just isolates the part where I need the deformation to happen. So on 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 my camera, this is literally just a section of the of the whole ground. I'm splitting it up because I need to um, remesh and apply some resolution onto the grid. And this stream is just the background stuff, um, ground, and I don't need. To, um, a, a lot of, a lot of resolution for it so after I've remeshed that I've added a rest node with some rest normals as well and then caching that out and so the first part of the deformation is on this stream so all I'm doing is just using a point bop um, with some noise to to apply the first deformation. You can see that this is not a this is this is not this is nothing. There's no there's no animation to it. It's just static. And the second part of the deformation is this. It's just um, the same setup just with different settings of the noises and the amplitude of the um the depth that we want to give it to um so these are just two states where the blending happens is through these attribute wrangles so as you can see they just move um the color is not i'm, I'm not interpolating the color on this visualizer but if we check this out we can see that i'm interpolating between the rest position to the first um first state and then after that from this state to the next state just a simple linear interpolation is somewhat like a blend shape um, using vex and stuff. Uh, don't worry. This is not this is not complicated at all. I'll I'll break it down for you. So, but we'll focus first on how I did this deformation. Um, so if we just dive inside, it's a bunch of nodes that do some 
it's really just um, masks multiplying on top of each other just to add some deformation onto the ground. Um, so the gist of it is the what I use to take to, to get the rings shape is by using a sine function. Um, and then re really that's that's pretty much the, the juice of all the this whole thing. So let's quickly just create a new point Bob. And I'll show you how I've done most of these things. All right, so with the sine function, if we just um, plug it in here, the sine function just takes a float value. If you have a look at the, so, It's just basically if if you give it a uh, a value from like any value really um, zero to one or anything zero to five anything that increases um, where's that So with this sine function, we can just feed it a mask and the mask that we'll use to create um, an rings from an impact point is if we just put a length sub, uh, length node, pop node, and plug this in to our color, we can see this kind of effect where uh, it gradually goes from zero to some number. Um, so if I have a look, this is from 0 to 30 apparently. So all I'm going to do is fit range that. And um, probably from something like this, 13. And if you have a look at our sine function, if you plug this in right here. Um, and essentially, our, um, the sine function has worked is work has, is working at the moment, but if we if you just multiply this zero to one mask with some value, you can see that we're actually getting some rings in it. So technically, whatever we feed in this fit range function, um, the the max would be the frequency of our rings. Or something like that. So let's, for example, just stick with this number. And so now we've created some kind of mask. Um, so the sine function, it gives us a value from negative one to one. And we, we can see we've got these large gaps in between our ones so all i did to just get really thin um thin gaps is just by using the absolute function so all of our negative ones would turn would would turn into ones well, basically the abs just think of it as how far is it from the number zero so even if you're like on, on the negative side of the things, um, if, if you're a negative five or a negative three, for example, how far is it from zero? Obviously it's gonna be three units. So just give us three. So if you, if you just see how it looks, look this in here. So now we see we've got some um, thinner rings now. So I essentially want to use this mask to push push the the ground somewhere so if i have a look at this i'm just gonna um, create a vector for example uh, let's just add some vector onto our ground 
um, let's say, one in the x axis. If you just put, plug that in there, everything you'll see everything goes up by one unit. However, if we multiply this vector with the mask that we have, you'll see that we're actually deforming the whole thing like this. And at the moment, it doesn't look quite like our reference.